hello everyone in this video we are going to start the talk of fetal problems during pregnancy the fetal disorders now let's first discuss what is the normal fetal growth while uh, in pregnancy actually there are three phases the first phase in which the cell number in the fetus increases it's around 16 weeks then the second phase starts in which the cell number will increase along with increase in the size of each cells and the third phase in which only size will increase so what I'm trying to tell you here in first phase there is a formation of the fetus each and every organ has been formed when the pregnancy achieved at 30 weeks now in second and third phase especially in third phase the already developed organ becomes bigger in size because of the hypertrophy or the increase in size of the cells now this increase in size of the cells are corresponding to the fat and collagen deposition in the fetus and it will increase the fetal weight so fetal weight will actually start increasing very well in third trimester compared to the first and second trimester now there are certain terms which we should discuss before going in the details first of all let's discuss what is preterm preterm means the birth of the baby before 37 weeks irrespective of the birth weight the postum baby that means the birth after 42 weeks irrespective of the birth weight what is low birth weight child low birth weight baby means literally means less than 2500 gram of birth weight irrespective of the gestational age of the baby it may be preterm it may be postum it may be term but low birth weight means less than 2500 grams very low birth weight is uh, defined as less than 1500 gram of birth weight and extremely low birth weight defined as a less than 1000 gram of the birth weight if you if you have noticed here all these three terminologies are irrespective of gestational age that means if the baby is born at the term and, and uh, the birth weight is 2000 gram then it is a low birth weight irrespective of the gestational age it may be preterm it may be postum but 2000 gram of weight is considered as a low birth weight now what is the problem with diagnosing the problems of uh, growth restriction in the fetus the problem is we cannot just diagnose the problem with the birth weight because in many fetus in which the mothers are all, uh, all already small the fetal will fetus will be also small so they are going to be have uh, a low birth weight but that doesn't mean that they are not healthy they are also healthy so to define this thing we use a graph that is normal distribution curve in which the gestational age increases along with fetal weight so when the gestational age increases the fetal weight should also increase accordingly we do a 90% criteria here that means 5% above and 5% below this this is the normal value or normal period or, or a normal distribution in which if the baby weight is less than 10 percentile of the fetal weight that should be at the respective gestational age it is considered as a small for gestational age what is SGA again you should concentrate fetal weight below 10 percentile which should be uh, which is defined uh, from the normal distribution curve so SGA means fetus is small 
which at the uh, gestational age compared to the normal distribution so now let's define what is sga sga have two types the type 1 is of 70% and type 2 that was of 30% in type 1 the small for gestational age child or baby is small but it but it is healthy there is no problem it has a normal pondral index we should not call it as a growth, growth restriction it's a normal thing in 30% of the sga babies are actually growth restricted that means intrauterine growth retarded babies now if we see the iugr babies are of two types symmetrical iugr and asymmetrical iugr symmetrical iugr means all the organs either they are developing well or not but simultaneously in asymmetrical iugr the organs growth is not same some organ is growing good and some organ is not growing well so if we see symmetrical iugr is of 20% and asymmetrical iugr is more common in case of 80% what happens in symmetrical iugr the cell size is normal but the cell number is decreased that means the total number of cells in the baby is less but in is asymmetrical iugr the cell size is decrease not the number that means the number of the cell is okay it's good but the size of each cell is not well good that's why uh, it's called asymmetrical iugr the pondral index if we taught uh, if we see it is normal in symmetrical iugr babies while the pondral index is decreased in asymmetrical iugr now what can be the cause of symmetrical iugr the symmetrical iugr happens because of some intrinsic problem with the fetus either it can be a genetic cause or any internal fetal problem it may be maternal infection which actually retards the growth of the baby in first or second trimester when the organogenesis is uh, happening and the reason for asymmetrical iugr is actually a later uh, the reason in the later periods of the pregnancy like third trimester the main reason is vascular insufficiency and if we talk, uh, teach about the prognosis then the asymmetrical iugr has a good prognosis why because the cell numbers are fine they are okay but because of they are not getting enough nutrition the baby is malnourished but in case of symmetrical iugr the cell numbers are already low you cannot improve cell numbers after some time so its prognosis is not well good now what can be the causes of iugr it can be constitutional that means the if the mothers are small in size then the fetal will be small in size there is nothing problem in that poor maternal nutrition chromosomal and structural abnormalities placental insufficiencies infections like tors alcohol smoking intake maternal diseases all these are causes of iugr now let's talk about what is pondral index pondral index is a very important index defining the symmetrical and asymmetrical iugr pondral index means estimated fetal weight with the help of ultrasound divided by fetal length thrice so what is the normal pi normal pi is 8.325 plus minus 2.5 if the fetal pondral index is less than 7 if this or uh, this formula is less than 7 that means the fetal length is good but fetal weight is not so it defines as a asymmetrical iugr now how we diagnose now what is the purpose of diagnose the purpose of diagnose the symmetrical or asymmetrical iugr is knowing the prognosis uh, that means that if the baby is a of symmetrical iugr then the prognosis is not good 
and if it is a asymmetrical IUGR we can have options multiple management options now some there are some fetal parameters on ultrasound which helps defining the IUGR the first of all is a head circumference head circumference is dependent on the development of brain and brain is the least last organ to get affected by malnutrition that means the growth of the brain is very less affected by malnutrition abdominal circumference in which the liver makes the uh, the major part of abdominal circumference and the liver is the most affected organ by malnutrition so the HCAC ratio that means head circumference and abdominal circumference ratio is a becomes a very important criteria for defining the IUGRs this ratio is increased in asymmetrical IUGR that means the head circumference is good but abdominal circumference is not well good according to the head circumference that's why it happens in the asymmetrical IUGR so HCAC ratio increased in asymmetrical IUGR this ratio is normal in symmetrical IUGR and and normal SGAs or constitutional SGAs now another criteria a very important criteria is femur length it is a very unique criteria unique parameter because femur length it can be increased but it it cannot be uh, decreased femur length will keep going increasing but it cannot be increased or decreased quickly very quickly it takes time so if the femur to abdominal ratio like femur length and abdominal circumference ratio is more than normal that means the fetal uh, the femur is already well developed but according to the development of femur abdominal circumference is not well developed because there is a malnutrition again liver is defining the ac so here we can actually uh, differentiate between acute and chronic malnutritions or acute and chronic IUGRs now what are the complications of IUGR asphyxia hypoglycemia meconium aspiration syndrome micro coagulations hypothermia pulmonary hemorrhage hyperviscosity electrolyte abnormalities growth retardation mental retardation all this happens in IUGR now the management the very important matter is management the management criteria for IUGRs is very limited we don't have any any hard and fast or any any very effective tool or effective management part so we can just treat the IUGR once the IUGR is there remember this thing we cannot treat it very quickly we have to go with this IUGR what we can do at this stage we can evaluate first the mother uh, maternal comorbidities which can be corrected for example if, if the mother is anemic that can be corrected if the mother is not having enough protein intake we can correct it if the mother has having some syndromes like cardiac syndrome kidney syndrome thalassemia all these things we can correct so uh, some amount of uh, problem that is creating for baby can be resolved but again IUGR cannot be treated just like uh, maternal comorbidities fetal status monitoring is the main main uh, thing in the management of IUGR that means we do monthly growth scan of the baby we do weekly umbilical artery dopplers because umbilical artery doppler is the marker of blood availability to the uterus and eventually to the placenta and fetus so if umbilical artery doppler if we have a reversed diastolic flow then we can uh, seriously tell that that the baby is not getting enough uh, enough blood supply and if we uh, we don't act at this point then the baby can have baby can die inside the uterus so in this matters when the 
reverse diastolic flow is there, we should terminate the pregnancy as soon as possible. The mode of delivery, we prefer the caesarean section because the weak babies, the IUGR babies uh, are less resistance to the problems happens with the delivery. So we try to do, not always, but we try, we prefer to do a caesarean section. And this management should be done in well equipped hospital with have uh, with having a great NICU and great neonatologist in there. So this is all about fetal problems during pregnancy. Thank you.